good to see you all this morning, <clears throat> and good morning to you. I hope that everyone's morning has started off as well as mine has, and that you are all enjoying uh, the time and opportunity that we have to be here this morning, that we have this time together as God's believing children, that we can be here to sing these songs of praise to God and that we can study God's Word together because in God's Word we find peace and comfort that help us in our daily lives that we can go forth and that we can live in peace because we have the hope that God's Word provides. And so... I, I killed it already. See, computers just don't like me, all right? See, I think it's on, yeah, on. Did I black it out? I don't know nothing about these things. See, I done did it, yeah. Well, I still have peace. I don't know about y'all. I still have peace regardless. I've already dealt with computer problems this morning. So I don't know what I'm doing. Start over. Okay, we'll start over. You see, let me just tell you a story about peace while we're starting over. <laughs> there I was. <laughs> just going over my morning sermon as I'm drinking my coffee and enjoying life and just making sure my order and my sermon is in nice working order, just how I want it to flow, right? Everything's going good, and then bam. About, hey, there it is. And then a black screen with just some little spinning dots going around, and I say, oh, no, what? Because I don't have it on a thumb drive yet. What am I going to do? And all It's just spinning. And, and oh, no, I could panic. But I was like, you know what? I'm not really. And I don't know. Maybe it was just because all of the scriptures about peace that I had read up to that point. I was like, well, this isn't good. But we'll make it somehow. And here we are. We have peace. Not every morning that you wake up, though, and as you start the morning, Monday through Friday or whatever it is, sometimes those mornings are so chaotic because maybe you slept in and the kids aren't up and the lunches aren't made and you jump up and you're like, hurry up kids, wake up, I overslept. That happened to us once this week. <laughs> I'm like, Piper, it's 820, you got to get up, we're late. So, how do you find peace in those times of of chaos well it's possible to have and if that's the least of our chaos you know we're doing good there's peace in knowing God's Word and so as we continue on the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5 verse number 22 the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace that's where we are today we're talking about this we're highlighting the idea of peace and how do we have peace? Well, I want to tell you that what is peace? There's different kinds of peace. Obviously, there's peace where Jesus gets out and he calms the wind by saying, peace be still. Or where uh, he tells someone to hold your peace, to not speak. There's different kinds of peace. There's peace that the world offers us. And then there's peace that God gives us. And so there's different kinds of peace, but how do we get it? Is it something that we learn? Or is it something that's given to us? And as I was saying, maybe I would ask what peace is to you, and maybe peace to you is something different. For me, it's a nice, quiet morning, enjoying a cup of coffee, before all the chaos of the world begins, right? That's a good, peaceful morning. That's peace. Until the kids wake up and everything goes crazy, you know, right? 
or until your computer starts going to a black screen of, I'm not going to try to make it go black because I don't, but then it just begins spinning in that circle and you're all like, work with me. There's peace though. Maybe it's a savings account, right? Some people, if you follow Dave Ramsey and his Financial Peace University, having a good savings, having that emergency fund on hand, and, and knowing that no matter if you lose your job, you have a means to cover your bills, you know, maybe that gives you peace. A kid-free weekend, maybe that's peaceful. Or just the idea of peace throughout the entire world where there's no conflict, no fighting, no wars. Maybe that's peaceful. However, you know, in 1929, when the stock market crashed, there was a lot of people who were like, oh no, what do we do? Because their peace, their means, their security come from that. And always inevitably for me, whenever my coffee cup ends, it's always so sad, too, whenever I grab my empty coffee cup and I'm all like, it's gone already? I take coffee to work with me, and this is my comfort food, right? And as I'm working and drinking my coffee, and I'm all like, what do you mean there's no more coffee? It's not even 9 o'clock yet, you know? Or as you're trying to put together a sermon, or just do your work from your laptop at home, and the kids need something, mom, mom, mama, bro. And that's the shirt that Toya wears nowadays. I mean, that's it. It's chaos. The world gives you chaos because you can find peace in your morning cup of coffee, but it's going to end. You can find peace in your savings account, but that too could go away. But what brings us true peace? is what we're looking for. Rejoicing in the time of tribulation. If we can do that, then we've found that peace that God has told us about, has given us by trusting in His Word. And we see that in the first century Christians. As we studied the book of Acts, we saw so many times the first century Christians rejoicing in moments of persecution or in hardship. As Peter and the apostles here were taken and they were commanded, don't speak in the name of Jesus. Don't talk about him or have anything to do with that. And they, and they didn't regard what they were told to do, but said, rather we're going to obey God than you and we're going to speak what we have seen and heard and they were beaten for it, and they were stoned for it, and they were put in prisons for it. But in this instance, they went on their way rejoicing because that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for Christ's name. They went on their way rejoicing. Have you ever suffered shame for Christ's name? You ever been in that situation? Again, it's not as prevalent in the United States as it is in other countries, but there's still some shame that can be pushed on you for being conservative and Christian and things like that because you don't fit into what the world standard is. You're different. Acts 16, Paul and Silas, again, they were in prison for preaching in the name of Christ, but even in prison, as they were locked up, they were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And that there is a testimony to the peace that God gives you. Even in that situation, facing... I've never been thrown in prison, so I don't know exactly what that might be like, but what they faced, being thrown in prison to be able to sing songs of praise to God 
in the midst of their storm that they were facing. That speaks volumes. And the other people around them who were in the same pit of despair could hear them. And they questioned, how do you have this peace? How are you so uplifted still in the midst of what we're going through? I had a good friend. He passed away since. I worked with him out at Cabot. His name was Glenn Hamilton. But he had a lot of health issues. And one time it was, he was on his deathbed and they had sent him to Dallas, Fort Worth, um, in the in the hospital as he laid there dying the nurse came in there and she was like why are you so happy why are you so cheerful all these health issues that you got you may not even make it out of this hospital and how can you be happy right now and he said because I know who holds my future in his hands there's a certain peace that we have that the world does not understand because we know who holds our future. And that's it. That's how we rejoice in those times of tribulation. When we face hardship, we know who holds our future. A peace that passes all understanding. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Us belonging to Christ this morning should give us the peace and strength and courage to carry on. No matter what comes, because that's a fruit of the Spirit that we should be growing in our lives. It was given to us by Christ the hope that we have in Him. That's what true peace is. Because it doesn't matter if our bank account's at zero. Mine's been there before, and I'm sure all of yours has been before. And isn't it just so terrible in that situation when you're looking at a zero bank account or a red bank account, and you say, well, how am I going to pay my energy bill? Or how am I going to feed my family this week? You know, what? or the kids need school clothes, or whatever it might be, and you're looking at your bank account versus what needs to be taken care of. Hey, can you find peace? Everything's going to be okay. You know, in the midst of all the hardship that I've ever had, someone has all, and it didn't matter whether it was finance, whether it was food, whatever it was, someone was always there for me regardless of if I had asked for help or not. But even those times where there wasn't anyone, you can find peace because you trust in God and you find that peace in Him. Peace I, li I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives you do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus Christ gives us his peace. The peace that he came to give to us is not what the world gives us. Because our food pantry will run out one day or our bank account will run out one day, our job that we trust in to, to provide, that may not be there for us. The car that we drive may break down. And those things that we put our trust and our hope in every day, those material belongings, the things of this world, they won't last. But what does last is the peace that God gives us through his word and through trusting in him. And so I would submit to you this morning that if you want to have true peace in your life, you need to have faith in God's word. Because without faith in God's word, 
that his word is true, that he's going to do for us what he told us that he would do, that this world may not provide us what we want, but regardless of that, we know where we're going when this life is over, and that's the peace that God gives us. This world is not my home, right? We're simply passing through. You cannot have peace without hope. John 16, 33 says, These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus overcame this world. He set forth an example that we should follow in his steps. We have peace with God through Christ. He's our Savior. But as he said, this world, you have tribulation, but in me you have peace. And tribulation comes, regardless. It, it could be a crashed computer in the morning while you're going over your sermon, you know? That could be a form of tribulation that you're facing in the world. But be of good cheer, you know? We need to be of good cheer in the face of that. And the reason we should be of good cheer in the face of that, because just like Paul and Silas, in the midst of that prison, they sang praises, just like my friend, as he laid sick in that hospital bed, he gave testimony or witness of Christ and the power and peace. We also shed that same light. We bear that same fruit of peace, of joy, of hope when we handle those situations the way that we should. That's that fruit of the Spirit that's being born out for all to see. For to be carnally minded, Paul would say, is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And so if we want that kind of peace that God tells us about, that His Word teaches us about, it's because we are focused spiritually on His Word, on His promises, that we're trusting in those things, that we're not trusting in the uncertain riches of the world, we're not being carnally minded, having our minds elsewhere instead of on what's really, truly important. If we want that type of peace, then we focus our hearts, our minds upon God, His Word, and we put that first in our life. What brings about peace? Well, we know from Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Our first step to having peace in our life is by hearing God's Word, by hearing it, by being obedient to it, by taking that word and, and living by that word in our lives. And if we do that, we're going to find that peace that he has promised. As I told my sister this morning, as we were talking about the computer and all, all that's going on, she said, Jason, you must have prayed for patience or something because you're being tested right now, you know. We have faith in God's word that things are going to be okay. And I didn't know if the computer was going to work or not, honestly. I just knew it was going to be okay, and here we are. Isaiah 26, 3, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Those who trust in God, he will keep you in peace. Because our minds, our hearts, it stayed on Him. He's our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. We trust in Him. Regardless of what happens in our life. <coughs> Pardon me. 
But how do we gain that peace? Jesus said, don't think that I've come to bring peace on earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. And indeed, Christ did not come to bring peace upon this earth. That's why there's wars and rumors of wars that Jesus said would continue to take place. Whenever he stood before Pilate and he said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it was, my, my servants would fight. Jesus didn't come to set up an earthly kingdom, to establish the kingdom that, that the Jews had thought that the Savior, the Messiah, was coming to do. He didn't come to bring that peace upon the earth, even though he's been called in Isaiah chapter 9, the Prince of Peace, right? He is the Prince of Peace but not to establish worldly peace. That was a misunderstanding from the Jews of that time. He came to bring peace between us and God because we were at enmity with God due to our sins. The sins that we had, that we carried, separated us from God. And because we were carnally minded and we were living in sin, we could not have peace, not true peace. We could have peace in this world, but that peace is fleeting. It's always going away. But the peace that God gives us is peace with Him because our sins are forgiven. Having, your, uh, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that good news of Jesus Christ, that hope of eternal salvation, that's the gospel of peace. That's why it's called the gospel of peace. Because it brings peace between us and God. <clears throat> Romans chapter 5, verse 1. He says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. We have peace in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation works patience and patience experience and experience hope and you can't have peace without hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet peradventure <clears throat> for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we should be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now receive the atonement. <clears throat> That's it. We receive peace through Christ. We have peace with God through Christ our Lord. We rejoice in hope of our God and the patience that we learn through that, the gospel of peace. How do we have peace with God? It's through obedience to his word. By hearing his word, by being obedient to it, by trusting in it, that's how we have peace. And it's easier said than done. We can read it all day long and see it in Scripture. But until we actually trust it and obey it, 
when we find that peace. We have to bear the fruit. So how do we bear the fruit of the Spirit? That's what we've been studying. The fruit of the Spirit is peace, joy, love, long-suffering, and gentleness, and meekness. And we begin to read these fruits of the Spirit and what we should be putting off. How do we bear those things or how do we give those off? Above all these things, he says in Colossians chapter 3, 14, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. <clears throat> and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. By being thankful to God for the things that he's blessed us with, by allowing God's word to rule in our lives, to keep that peace to rule in our hearts, to allow that to rule in our hearts. That no matter what the world may throw at us, we know who has us. We know where our loyalty stands. And that's with Christ and God. So how do we bear the fruit? Well, we read about it in the scripture reading this morning. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, and I think this part's key, definitely for finding the peace, for maintaining the peace, no matter what comes, this is definitely key. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. How do you have peace in your life? Because you begin to think about these things. The things that are pure, the things that are lovely, the things that are of good report, the things that are of virtue. Anything that is praise to God, think on these things. Keep those in your mind. Find something good in the midst of the storm and you're going to find that silver lining whenever you're thrown in prison and you're there at midnight chained up and you're singing songs of praise to God. You found it. You're thinking on the things that are good in the midst of the tribulation. That's the peace that God gives us. Think on those things. That's how we bear his fruit. Because when we do those things, people around us see us we're that light that's set up on a hill that people can see us. They can see our good works. They can see the fruit that we bear. They can see the peace that God gives. And that's what it's about. We must abide in Christ. And this is our last scripture. Because we're called to bear fruit, we must have these fruits that we're bearing. Abide in me, Jesus said, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love 
If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. How do you have peace? How do you have joy that's full? How do you shed those fruits so that people can see it? That they can see your joy, joy that's full, that you have peace in your life? It's because we abide in Christ. And that's our goal. Every day that we get up, that we go to work, that we go to school, that we go wherever we go, to the store, on vacation, whatever it is, we carry that lamp with us and people see it. And so as we conclude, there's a difference between the peace that the world offers and the peace that God offers, and we've seen that. The peace that this world has to offer is fleeting. You can have peace one minute with the world and tribulation the next. But if you want that true peace that never leaves, that's always there with you, it's by faith in God's word, by holding that close to your heart, by thinking on those things, bearing that fruit's what happens. The peace that surpasses all understand, uh, understanding is found in that faith that we have in Christ. To gain that peace, we have to stay faithful to God's word. Christ died to bring us peace, to give us that peace between us and God, and to have it we abide in Christ, to have our joy filled and to have that peace. And this morning the lesson is yours. Maybe you're here this morning and, and like so many people we've trusted in the uncertain riches and cares of this world that we've put our hopes and trust in, it's going to fail us. Savings, banks, coffee, whatever it is, it's going to end. But the one thing that remains faithful is God's word. And that's where we find our true peace. And if you need to find that true peace, we stand here ready to assist you. Or if you need help getting your life back on track, won't you come while we sing the song that's been selected?